We're looking at a stack of quarters and nickels in Canada, which ironically they're both made out of bullion nickel. The five cent pieces are 1981 and earlier, the 25 cent pieces 1999 and earlier. What's interesting is there are 25 cent pieces there for one dollar, there's 18 25 cent pieces for 450, yet they virtually have the exact same amount of nickel weighed within it. Now with the price of nickel at about uh, seven and a half dollars or so and silver trading at 28 and three quarters an ounce, what that means is one of the nickel quarters from 1968 to 99 is worth about 8.3 cents where a silver quarter is about four dollars and thirty cents. Here's a silver quarter here and this is the amount of nickels or quarters that are needed to match in metal value this one here. I need 51 of these quarters to match just that one there. Now steel is trading in at 35 cents a pound and that's what the uh, current quarters are made out of. Therefore, if we need 103 of them to make one pound, therefore 35 cents divided by 103 gives us, well that number, and therefore I can take uh, for this quarter in here, just take the 830 which is how many cents it's going by, divided by 0.3398 cents. I need 24.6 of these to match one of these, and I needed 51 of those to get one silver quarter. The earlier piece has to do with Gresham's Law. I'll state what Wikipedia states about it. And today is the final day of February the 28th, 2013. Pretty much everything in the red for the month was silver down eight and two thirds percent. We'll take a look at uh, two silver charts, the two hourly and the monthly. But first, moving, uh, continuing further, Within Gresham's Law, within Wikipedia's uh, definition, it's an economic principle that states when a government compulsory overvalues one type of money and undervalues another, the undervalued money will leave the country or disappear from circulation into hordes. While the overvalued money will flood into circulation, it's calmly stated as bad money driving out good, but is more accurately stated bad money drives out good if their exchange rate is set by law, which it has been for quite some time. Okay, so that's that, that's the big reason why I personally am getting as much copper, nickel, and silver within those coins that I can. There is no reason I will get rid of any quarter or dime that was minted before the last millennium. And uh, that's because of Gresham's Law. Let's look at some charts, starting within the uh, monthly chart. That's the uh, final day for the month. A new candle will start tomorrow. And of course, as I stated, down eight and two thirds of a percentage point, having what's look, looking like its fourth test now of this 27-ish area. More time support is tested, more likely it is that it is to be taken out. If, of course, this area is taken out, I'd be looking for either this area to become support, which is the 19, 20, 21-ish area. Also look for the possibility of a failed breakdown for that. I'd be looking for it to probably go down about the 24 area, but I'd have to see it uh, bounce back and recapture above the 26 range fairly fast. So that's the key thing to look for that possible failed breakdown. I don't think it's personally going to go down towards this area. Now it could, of course, but it's what I'm thinking. And that's all that really comes down to. Maybe we do get that failed move down to 24-ish area and then burst higher as a possibility. But uh, with the volume placed uh, over the last, last week, it's been a long correction. At some point, it's going to rebound. But even again, if it does move down here, just like the move down here, it's an area where I presume it's going to be a great buying opportunity if, of course, that does take place. Okay, let's move on now to the uh, two-hour chart. What I've been mentioning is the Fibonacci from this low and the last high, which is now set in at 29.46. And uh, what we can see here is the second Fibonacci value, which is set at 28.73, is currently being tested right now. So it's possible that we see this move become that of a failed move 
And what I need to see for that is, well, either a fast move down here or something that uh, where it stays and holds below it for a decent amount of time into today's session. And, of course, if that is the case, I'd be looking on Friday or into Monday for further downside action to the uh, low 28 areas. The low is set at 2828. And then, of course, down to the low 28s, high 27s as the next potential target, of course. And uh, I mentioned a target of about 2990. Uh, that would still come into play if, of course, uh, you, you do bottom from this area and can continue to move further. Because if you're looking for the pattern of the lows, let's take a look at these lows. One, two, three. As of now, we're still technically making a higher low from this point for this point in here, but that's barely and of course not too far off from uh, taking out that low as well. Also looking at the running average from the uh, the bottom area that was support, 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 and then this last support area really didn't get much of a move, making of course this lower uh, high from the uh, previous one as well. So uh, I'm going to end this video right now and thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.